Hi. I never expected this channel to get the amount of views that it did. This was never my way to, you know, just make a bunch of videos and hope that a bunch of people watch them and gain something from them. In the beginning, this is really just my way of speaking to a therapist that I can actually afford to pay for, which is my $320 JVC camera. You know, I would go through a 12 or 14 hour day and I'd jot down the things that annoyed me and when I got the time, I would speak about them to the camera. I had a teacher named Bernard Fox and he said something interesting. He said that when you think you know something, you'll figure out how quickly you don't know it when you're forced to explain it. And some of the things that bothered me, I wouldn't really figure out why they bothered me and I wouldn't really figure out if I was even correct for being bothered by them until I spoke about them. So I would speak about them, regardless of what other companies would say, regardless of professional courtesy. If there was something that you know, I didn't see being discussed on the internet or in real life, or that wasn't discussed to, to the manner that I wanted it to be discussed, and from the, the voice of professional working experience, in the trenches experience, I wanted to talk about it on camera, and I wanted to let it out. So that's what this channel was. But as time went on, I noticed you know, people are doing what people do on YouTube, which is actually watch them, and occasionally send fan mail and also occasionally send hate mail. I'm grateful for both. And I've been getting a lot more of both of them lately. And I'm noticing that there's one misconception that I'd like to, to address with this video. That I spend my entire day just, you know, running around telling uh, customers, vendors, and, uh, and staff members to go fuck themselves. And, you know, saying these terrible things and just making money anyway. And that this has, you know, made me a little bit of an anti-hero uh, in, the, in the, this industry because, you know, I'm not a failure at it, you know, I'm not going to say that I, I'm not Blue Raven Technology or, or, or Screen Tech Inc, but, you know, I have a business that sustains itself, that I'm built from nothing, and a lot of the time, I, I am telling people to go fuck themselves, I am telling the truth when it hurts, and I, I'm not putting up with people's crap, but that's not something that just came about overnight, and it's not something I do for fun or because, you know, because I want to engage in a dick waving contest with everybody that walks into my office. It's because I have an of service mentality and, that, and it's easy to be taken advantage of when you have this mentality. Let me explain what I mean. I think that there are two types of technicians out there. There are people who do this because it's a means towards making people happy. They like making people happy and this is uh, one of the ways they can do it. You know, they're, they're doing this because of the look on their face that the, on the look of the customer's face when you know they hand them back their car that you know they need to get to work that they could not afford uh, more than a hundred dollars to repair on and you, know, you 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 save you save their ass it's not even an ego maniacal or ego ego based issue they just really enjoy putting a smile on somebody's face when they know that somebody else may have not been able to put that smile on their face and you know the paycheck well that's just a bonus those are the people who are going to be doing this even if they're in a homeless shelter, even if they're in some sort of crazy situation where they're unable to make a living. This is going to be what they're doing regardless because that's their identity, that's who they are. And that's part of who I am. You know, I Granted, I have to collect a check at the end of the day because I have $20,000 a month in overhead and expenses. So, you know, yeah, I have to get paid for it. But in reality, and I hope to God any of the, you know, these East Village customers don't watch this and, tr and try to quote me on it, but, you know, if I wasn't getting paid for this, I'd still be here doing this for free because I, I enjoy making people happy. And I enjoy making people happy who would have otherwise gotten fucked at, you know, had they went somewhere else. And, and I, I enjoy that. And then there's the other mentality, which is I get to work at 8 o'clock. I leave work at 4. This is exactly what I have to do. This is what I'm specified to do, and I'm going to get it done. In the first scenario, that person has taken on a very lofty goal. Their goal is to make somebody happy. This is a subjective process because what makes one person happy may not make another person happy. And what may make you happy today may not be what makes you happy tomorrow. It's always, it's, it's a moving target. Whereas the uh, just standard technician's goal, the guy who's just punching a clock and getting in and getting the fuck out so that you know, he can do whatever else with his day, he's doing this with an objective goal. I am going to provide this diagnosis. I am going to do that within this time frame. I am going to give them the options. After I give them the options, I will perform the exact service. After I perform the exact service, I will collect the money. And this seems like a very, very simple and easy to follow formula. But the reality is, there are many, many people who will walk away unhappy, even though you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And, and sometimes these people just don't understand what, what's wrong. They, don't, they think that they've done anything wrong. And a lot of the times they haven't done anything wrong. They've done their job. 
but they haven't made uh, the customer happy. And my goal is to make the customer happy. My goal is to see people made happy. And this is very difficult to achieve. Now, the problem when you, when you take on that goal in a service-based business is that there will be people who take great advantage of it. They see that your goal is to make them happy and that you have not done your job if you have not made them happy. If you haven't done your job, then you know, you're, you're going to feel weird accepting money. So they will purposely be unhappy so that they can get something for free or so that they can get something done faster or so that you will put the other person's uh, stuff away. They will literally walk in front of other people to get to you. And they will use this emotional blackmail that since your goal is to make them happy to try to get something for free or to try to get something that they really don't deserve to get. And I have no appreciation for that. I have, I have no respect for that. Um, and, and it does happen. Like We just received a review recently. You know, somebody dropped off a laptop on Friday night. You know, we, we told them technically diagnosis is one or two days. We, there was nothing else there to do, so we opened it instantly. We figured out exactly what was wrong with it. We quote a price. We say, this is going to be done on Monday or Tuesday. The day that the part gets here, we're going to install it for you. And, uh, and you know, on Monday we get this agitated phone call about why it isn't done yet. And we explain, you know, hello, we told you Monday, Tuesday, and we'll call you when it's done. And Tuesday morning we get this miserable phone call about it not being done yet, and the guy's, you know, going on and on and on. Are you professional? Are you saying you run a business? Why are you giving me the tracking number so fast for? And, you know, then we finally get this scalding. And I told him, listen, if you're going to be combative, I'm just going to hang up on you. Uh, and I will email you the number, and, uh, and good day. Go. You, would you, I have to go back to fixing the other 20 machines here so that when the part for yours comes in, I can actually fix it. And we fix it on Tuesday, and you know, of course, he had tried to leverage some sort of fifty-dollar discount out of the deal because it w of the inconvenience. Um, yeah, I told you it was going to be done Monday or Tuesday, and we actually finished it at Tuesday around two fifty-three o'clock. So technically, from the objective technician standpoint, when I did my job, from the subjective standpoint of making somebody happy, this was somebody who is simply not going to be happy with anything we said. When we said Monday or Tuesday, you know, he, was, he kind of implied that Tuesday and Monday would be pushing it, even though this was dropped off on a Friday and needed a parts order. And uh, then he, told, he says on the phone, you should give people a longer turnaround time if, it's gonna be, if, if there's a chance, just so that you don't look like a liar. Why do you want to look like a liar? Why don't you tell me Wednesday if it's going to be done on Tuesday? But he's already pissed off that we told him Tuesday when it's actually done on Tuesday, because that's, that's too long. It's like, what the fuck? My goal is to make you happy, but I clearly cannot make you happy. There is nothing that is going to make you happy. And we get this one star of you, it's like, if you want to be disrespected and treated meanly and cheated, go to Rossman Group. They told me it would be done on Tuesday, and it was actually done on Tuesday at 3. Rip off! Fuck you. Uh, my goal is to make people happy. Now, what I need to do if my goal is to make people happy is to make sure that I don't let anybody in that door who is going to use uh, emotional blackmail on me or any sort of black, eh, blackmail to, to get what they want. Because once they see that your goal is to make them happy, it's very, they can do something very simple. They could simply not be happy until they get it for free or they get it for cheap. Or um, and, and I'm not going to do that. I don't want to be taken advantage of. It's easy to take advantage of people who, who are nice. And again, the, the places where their goal is to just get you in and out and you know, objectively make as much money as possible off of each job, you know, those places, uh, they don't get taken advantage of as much because the, the customers can sense that that's not really going to work. Whereas here, when they see my goal is to make them happy, they're going, you know, the, wrong, the wrong people are going to come in and take advantage of that. And this is why this customer service philosophy and mentality doesn't work and is not profitable at many businesses because they just get bent over and fucked in the ass by all of these people, especially, yeah, no offense to New York, but in, neighbor, in a neighborhood like this where a lot of the customers are, it's a customer base of spoiled, entitled, sanctimonious, arrogant little children that were never told no as adults and that have this idea that they can just get whatever the fuck they want because their, you know, their parents never told them, no, you're not, why are you, no, don't do that. And you know, and smack them like they were supposed to, and that is uh, what you get in in one of these, uh, you know, uh, hipster gentrified neighborhoods where you know people's parents are paying for everything. And I I don't want and the thing is I don't want to stop giving good service to people. I don't want to stop being the guy that you know it's eight eight o'clock and I'm closing, but somebody comes in and they have a problem and they need it done the next day. I don't want to be the guy that says rush service fee. 
I don't want to be the guy that's, uh, that, that just says, you know, fuck you, we're not open right now. Uh, and, and the way that I'm able to keep that of service mentality is by being very specific as to who I let into my business. Uh, so I do tell people to go fuck themselves. I have told staff members you're fired, be, you know, you suck. Uh, here, here's why you suck and here's why I don't want you back here and why I'm not going to listen to your argument. You know, I have told customers uh, I don't want anything to do with this repair. I have told customers to go fuck themselves. I have told vendors to go fuck themselves. I have not paid vendors that offered me garbage, knew they were offering me garbage and actually expected me to pay a 20% markup over my regular vendor just because I paid on credit. You know, that came back to bite them in the ass. Uh, and. I, and, and I believe that it's been earned be, and justified because of how I treat my regular customers. If I let the 1% that, you know, one of my old, old, old bosses that I actually referred to in the previous video uh, of a record label, you know, used to say, he used to say, they're a cancer, we have to wipe out the cancer. You have to wipe out the, the cancer. You know, I don't want cancers in my business. I don't want people here who are going to force me to put to put these strict policies in a place where I have to treat everybody to a lower standard of quality just so I don't get screwed over by one to five percent of the people. And, uh, and that's important to me. I've also had employees that would go, that, that would get carried away with this mentality and philosophy and I would hear them every time they picked up the phone, you know, they would act like the judge and jury of, of every customer. Like this person's not, this person seems like they have an attitude. We're not going to give them as good service. Those people have all since been fired. And gone because they don't understand that there's a time and a place for the, for this mentality. For example, uh, the douchebag that expects the laptop that I said would be done on Tuesday to be done before Tuesday, you know, just because he's so important. Uh, that guy, you know, he can go fuck himself. You know, he, he can go fuck himself with my JVC camera. But uh, there's another guy that, a great example, left off a machine for preventative maintenance, not even for a repair. He spends over a hundred bucks on preventative maintenance. His drive uh, was running a little slow. It had delays, no bad sectors, just delays. And he figured it may die. So we decided to spend over a hundred bucks to have a new drive installed and all the data put on it. And the drive we gave him was a top of the line drive that failed in <laughs> two and a half months. So we're recovering the data and it's taken about two and a half, three days. And the guy uses the thing every day. He really needs it. So on the second or third day, he comes in and he's like, is it ready yet? And we go, well, no, it's still transferring. He's like, okay, just, you know, come on, t t just tell me when it's ready, all right? And he wasn't being a dick, but he was on the cusp of where he was starting to become a dick. And my coworker looks at me and goes, you know, man, he's a dick. And I go, yes, he's a dick. He's earned the right to be a dick. He paid over $100 here not to even have something fixed. He paid for preventative maintenance. And the preventative maintenance he paid for so that he would not have downtime later actually directly caused his downtime. And we are still fixing it. He's earned the right to be a dick. That man can be a dick all he wants. That man could yell in my face, and I would apologize profusely for the inconvenience I've caused him, and I would not badmouth him in any way under my breath or in a video, because he has earned the right to be a dick. Uh, so I'm, you know, I don't tell everybody just because they're acting a certain way, you got to go fuck yourself, or fuck you for being an asshole, and blah, blah, blah. I reserve that very carefully for the people who have earned and, des and deserve to be treated like the scum that they are. You cannot treat everybody like scum. You cannot treat everybody like you are the king of the world and like you're some, uh, you know, like you're some sort of morally superior human being who just uh, shits on everybody else who treats you worse. Because that's being an egomaniac. There's a difference between being an egomaniac and being an up-service technician. You simply can't run a business uh, telling everybody to go fuck themselves. You and I think it's because. I have this pragmatic view uh, of how other people are thinking that that I'm successful. It's not because I tell everybody to go fuck themselves. It's not just because I don't take shit from people. Uh, it, it, that 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 is maybe 10% of the formula. The other 90% of the formula is being is having an of service mentality where I see uh, what's going on in the head of the other person. I can see whether or not this person has a legitimate reason to be as angry as they are, or whether they're just being a whiny asshole. And you need to be able to determine this if you're going to be in, have this of service mentality or you are going to be taken advantage of bent over and fucked in the ass by every customer who walks in uh, again there's a neighboring business that any single time somebody is unhappy they issue a full refund they apologize you know they'll still get a one star review because they don't they don't they don't know how to manage this, these people so they'll for, 
and you know sometimes neither do I but to a greater extent they don't and uh, I try to make people feel shame for how they're acting when they're acting like annoying little uh, cunts whereas uh, this place will just you know apologize for refund and whatever without actually addressing the feelings of the other person or what's going on inside the mind of the person who's mad and you know that doesn't work and I can't run a business where I'm just where I'm uh, where my goal is to make people happy where I don't fully charge people if I don't fully make them happy because if I let every single person in under that idea I would go bankrupt and, and I would also start to become cynical and jaded and I would agree and I would have a deep-rooted disdain for, for my fellow man and, and I don't want to have that I want to still like other people I still want to see the goodwill in other people and the way that I maintain this is by making sure that everybody who walks in this door deserves to, uh, to be treated that way, deserves to be here. Uh, because they're not going to, again, they're not going to get that treatment somewhere else. They're just not. It's not because other people are not as nice. It's not because other people aren't smart. There are other people who are smarter than I am, who have better social skills, who are nicer to people, who are in this business. But they just don't treat their customers the exact same way. And uh, that, that's a treatment that's fairly unique to this repair shop, in my experience. And I want to make sure everybody who walks through the door or anybody who calls to buy a part deserves uh, that treatment. I want to talk about some of the, also some of the up-service moments that I've truly enjoyed. Uh, one of my last gigs as a professional audio technician that would repair gear at a recording studio or, a, let's say, a, a club that you know has a rah, let's say different musical acts on every night. It was at this venue on the Lower East Side, I forget the name of it, that was meant to hold about 350 to 400 people. And some group had an opening act, and they were set to go on stage at I think 9 o'clock. At 8.50, like 8.45 or 8.50, I get a phone call, and they say that absolutely you know, nothing works here, what the fuck happened? I, and, and I asked them to explain, and they go, you know, we just don't, I, I don't know. And, and he, the guy is very clearly panicked, and he can't even explain. Because I was asking a few basic questions, like, did you even do a sound check at 8? Uh, what happened? Was it a power surge? Did this blow up? What's wrong? And they're panicking. So I walk down from where I'm working at the time to go to this club. And, you know, I get let right in past all the other people, past the group. And I, I, have a, I grab a bag. It's like a 50 or 60 pound bag. I have a Sencor transistor testo. I have a Hakko 936. I have a Hakko 808. Uh, I have a, a batch of generic transistors, I have fuses, I have you know some stuff for some basic adcom and power sound amps, and I have some basic resistor values and emitter resistor values for amp repair, and and some other basic shit. You know, you know I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna fix uh, an esoteric amp that has you know let's say eight the uh, output transistors that I have to match beta values on to, but. I, you know, I can fix a simple problem on something if, if, if in a fairly ghetto but workable fashion on lo short notice with what's in my bag here. So I visit, and this place has oh, half of their audio equipment. They, they, this is the kind of place that doesn't want it to be in view. They don't even like. They don't even want it in rack mount in view. I mean, a lot of this crap is actually <laughs> above the ceiling. So I'm crawling into the ceiling with a flashlight in my mouth and my bag, which is fifty something pounds. And I, and I get to work on this amp. And again, with any, any other problems, I'd have been fucked. It wasn't a simple one like a fuse. But on virtually any other problem, the complicated problem, I would have been fucked based on the time frame and what I had on me. But I managed to make the amp work. And managed to make a second amp work. And they actually have a show. And, you know, when I, I ran downstairs at something like 9.15 or 9.20, and I told the guy, who then tells the, the vocalist, you know, okay, check, and she checks, and she is elated and excited, and then, and then I see, you know, 300 people start uh, walking up around the stage as they announce they're going to go on. That was a good feeling. Uh, and th that was a really good feeling. And it, it wasn't about the money at that point. I, I, the money was the last thing in my mind, and it wasn't about the, the ego or the credit. Nobody at that place but the one person that called me there even knew my name, even knew why I was there. They were just, you know, they just said this person was supposed to be let through, so I just got let through. Nobody even knew why I was there. Nobody knew my name. And I think I made like 150, 200 bucks for what amounted to a 20 or 30 minute visit. And, and that, 
what mattered to me was what the look in that person's face when they're over you know the opening night here went from being oh my god we're ruined to oh my god it works and then I see 300 people walk in they were all cheering and happy and excited that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't taken that call on, on a Saturday night uh, and that's a good feeling and you know it's it's more and that's a good feeling that, that means a lot more to me than the money than the than and the credit, and and it, it makes this profession worth it. It makes all of the bullshit that you go through, all the times where you have three hours left to make something work, and 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 nothing you do will, will make it work. It makes all the times that you've made something work and the client shows up and it fails. It makes all the times that you know that that you have had a bad financial situation in the pursuit of doing what you want to do. It makes all of that worthwhile when you have those, those, those glimmering moments. And that's why I'm an up-service technician and not a, you know, not a clock-punching technician. Uh, well, hopefully this has uh, been helpful in some way and hopefully this has dispelled the myth that I do nothing but sit in a chair and tell people to go fuck themselves and collect money. I, I think I, I'm blessed with the privilege of being able to make money in this industry regardless of whether I'm fixing a computer, a cell phone, a uh, Poltec equalizer, an amplifier, or a PlayStation uh, in 1997 is not because of just p a specific technical skill or knowledge, but rather because I I love what I do and I love making people happy through through uh, through, through the art of what I do.